Hi, I'm Cornel, and I'll be speaking about ontologies and where to find them. In this RDM byte, you will learn what ontologies and controlled vocabularies are and why it is important to use published ontologies where possible. We will discuss where you can find ontologies and we will give two examples of how to use repositories to search for relevant ones. So what are ontologies and controlled vocabularies? Let's start with controlled vocabularies. When I ask you to think of a bat, do you think of the animal or a baseball bat? In many cases, the context in which you use the term will make it obvious which one you mean. However, if you use bat as a search term for an internet search, the computer has no way of knowing what you are looking for. The same is true when querying life science databases. It's important that the search engine unambiguously knows what you are looking for. Many life science databases therefore use controlled vocabularies to describe their data. These vocabularies are a normative collection of unique and non-overlapping terms. For each term, additional information may be provided, such as a definition, a set of synonyms, an editor, a version, etc. How do controlled vocabularies relate to ontologies? Let's look at an example. This is my dog Nova. We can describe her with many different terms. Nova, man's best friend, furry four-legged creature, or a bit more scientifically, dog, canine, or canis familiaris. If we look a bit closer to these terms, we can see that we can draw some relationships between them. For example, Nova is a canis familiaris, and a canis familiaris is a canine. This is what we call a parent-child relationship, in which the children are more specialized than the parents. For example, canis familiaris is more specialized than its parent term canine. Terms can have multiple child terms. For example, canis lupus or the gray wolf would also be a child term to canine. In summary, ontologies are formal knowledge representation schemes that use controlled vocabularies and that describe relationships between the different terms. Let's look at a more scientific example. In this case, colorblindness. Colorblindness can be called different things. If you are looking on PubMed for papers about colorblindness, which terms should you use? If the paper has been annotated with specific ontology terms, it should not matter which search term we use, the paper should show up. Note that these ontology terms have an accession number. We have not made these terms up. They have been published and curated and are part of an ontology called the Human Phenotype Ontology, which can be reused by anyone studying human disease. Ontology reuse significantly facilitates data interoperability. If different data providers use the same ontology to describe their data, they can integrate the data much more easily. Furthermore, it's more cost-effective for data providers to reuse existing, preferably well-established and well-tested ontologies to describe their data rather than to develop ontologies from scratch. With a growing number of ontologies being developed, finding the best one for your specific application may seem like a daunting task. To tackle this challenge, the scientific community has set up platforms to list and serve ontologies in order to enable their reuse. These platforms can take the form of libraries that list the collected ontologies, such as Fair Sharing or the Open Biological and Biomedical Ontology Foundry, or they can take the form of more advanced repositories that feature a variety of services, such as browsing and searching, visualization, metrics, recommendations, etc. Three often used repositories in the biomedical domain are the Ontology Lookup Service from EBI, Ontobi, and the NCBO BioPortal. So how do we use these repositories to find ontologies? The easiest way is to use a simple keyword search. All repositories will support keyword searches, but we will look at an example on the EBI Ontology Lookup Service. Let's say we have conducted a study on colorblindness. We can simply search for this term on the Ontology Lookup Service and this will look for ontology terms that correspond to color blindness or that have color blindness in the description. For example, color blindness is a term in the human disease ontology. 
We can click on the term to see the position of this term in the hierarchy of the ontology, and we can also see the children of this term. If we click on the ontology to which this term belongs, we get a short description and we can browse the different terms of the ontology. Additionally, we can download the entire ontology. We can visit the ontology homepage. Or we can request that a term is added to the ontology. Another useful way to find relevant ontologies is to scan a text for ontology terms. This can, for example, be an abstract or part of your grant application. You can find the service on the NCBO BioPortal website under the Recommender tab. We can choose to input a text or a list of keywords. In this example, we will submit the abstract of the FAIR data management paper. This gives us a list of ontologies that we can sort based on the overall score, the extent to which the ontology covers the input text, the degree in which the ontology is accepted and trusted by the scientific community, the level of detail provided by the ontology, or the level of specialization of the ontology to the input data's domain. We can also highlight the terms that are present in the ontology in the input text. We can then further investigate the chosen ontology by clicking on it. That concludes our RDM bytes on ontologies and where to find them. Take a look at the links associated with this video and links to additional resources for more information, as well as other RDM bytes in this series.